Hi, and welcome to Data Structures in 5 Minutes. <coughs> Today I'll be concluding my sorting unit uh, with a discussion on quick select and then a lower bound for comparison-based sorting algorithms. And this discussion will wrap up this unit really nicely. And quick select is not a sorting algorithm, but we've seen a lot of the ideas from quick sort, and so we should be able to understand this algorithm really well. And so let's get started. Quick select, uh, the first two steps will be very familiar to you, so I'll blitz through them really quickly. I want to first find the pivot, uh, choose a pivot, whatever pivot it may be. Um, usually want it to be random, and then you split the list based on the pivot again. List 1 has all the elements that are smaller than the pivot. List 2 has the uh, elements that are um, larger than the pivot. And you can have a pivot um, list if you're using singly linked lists to store all the keys that are equal, or you can just spread them out just like um, as you would if you implemented quick sort on an array. And so quick select, you're given an input argument j, which wants you to find the jth smallest element. Or in other words, think of it this way. You're given an unsorted array, you want to find the jth smallest element. That's the same thing as sorting the array and finding um, the element at index j. But we can uh, do this without having to completely sort the input array that we're given. And so this part will be different here. So if input j, if I want to find the smallest element and this uh, jth smallest element, and it's less than list1.length, that means I'm going to find an element that's really small, and so I can just recursively find j in list1. If input j is less than list1.length and pivots.length, and I already did this test, that means j is a pivot. Um, well, the element at j, the j smallest element, is the pivot. Otherwise, if it's not the first two cases, then it's, it, it's in list2, and so what I have to do is recursively find j in list2, but then since I'm deleting these first, I'm throwing out these first two lists, so I have to subtract j from list1.length and pivots.length in list2. And arrays, uh, pivots.length is just 1. So, yeah. We'll see how that happens here, because we're going to um, use quick select with an array um, in our little simulation here. So we're given that j equals 4. We want to find the fourth smallest element. And um, a human look tells us it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is the fourth smallest element. And we'll prove that by going through quick select. And so our pivot will choose the last one just because. So 3 is our pivot. And we start with i and j as usual. Um, and so i stops at 6 here, and j stops at 1, because 1 is less than 3. And so these two swap, 2, 1, 5, 6, 4, 9, 3. Good. And so our search continues. i stops at 5 now, but j doesn't stop until it hits 1 again. And so we know to swap 5 and 3, and swap the pivot back in. 2, 1, um, 3, 6, 4, 9, 5. Good. And so we've had our list 1 and list 2. j is 4. 4 is greater than list1.length, which is 2. 4 is also greater than list1.length plus pivots.length, which is 3. So we know that we need to find this here um, in the second list. And we have to recursively find j, which is 4, minus list1.length, which is 2, minus pivots.length, which is 1. So j, our new j prime is equal to 1, and our new list is 6, 4, 9, 5. So we do this here. Um, our pivot's 5. Um, so i stops at 6, j stops at 4. We have 4, 6, 9. And then um, i just keeps going, right, until it hits the pivot. And um, sorry, no, i doesn't keep going. i stops at uh, 6 and j stops at 4, so we know to swap the four, uh, the 5 and the 6 here, 4, 5, 6, 9, and then we've reached our base case because um, our j is here and this is of length 1, and so quick select gives us 4. Awesome! So that's how quick select works.
Finally, I have very little time left to talk about this, but this is a very simple argument. So we want to find a lower bound for comparison-based sorting because we realize that merge sort and quick sort all have n log n worse uh, average to worst case time. And so we want to know why. And um, one difference between comparison-based sort and the bucket sort and radix sort is that we don't have to know what the keys are like for comparison-based sorting. All we have to do is compare each pair. Um, whereas for our bucket sort, right, you have to see what the range of your key is so you know which queue to enqueue your elements into for bucket sort. And for radix sort, something similar, you need to know, um, well, what base your number is so you can um, do counting sort passes. So that's the main difference. Um, you realize that there are n factorial permutations of any length n array, and this is basic uh, seventh grade algebra, hopefully. And um, again, just to reiterate, comparison-based sorts can only compare pairs one at a time. And let's go back to the math here. So we can derive an upper bound and a lower bound for n factorial. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot, dot, dot. If you replace the n minus 1, n minus 2 with n's, you, you, you'd agree with me that th this is much bigger than um, n factorial, and that's n to the n. Now, on the other hand, if I cut short um, n times n times 1 times n times 2, dot, 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 to 1, to n times n minus 1, n minus 2, to n over 2, this is what I get. And you know that this is already less than that. And we can make this even smaller by saying, hey, what if I just put n over 2 um, for all the uh, factors in our product? And so this is exactly what I did. There are only n over 2 terms here, and each term is n over 2. So it's n over 2 to the n over 2. And so I've derived an upper bound and a lower bound for n factorial using exponentials. Good. And one other observation we make about comparison-based sorting algorithms is that um, your algorithm has to take into account these n factorial permutations, <coughs> but your algorithm can only differentiate by branching, right? But branching based on the decision of its comparisons. And so the only way your algorithm can accommodate all the different possible branches is if um, your number of comparisons, 2 to the k, is less as greater than n factorial. And so we realize that k has to be greater than n log n. Because if you plug in n log n, um, well, k has to be greater or equal or around n log n asymptotically. Because if you plug in n log n, uh, you can see that this n pulls, up, uh, pulls into the log to become an exponential, and the 2 and log 2 cancel out, and that'll give you n plus n, which, I mean n to the n, which is the upper bound we derived there. And so, um, because there's this uh, comparison constraint, um, we can derive a lower bound for um, comparison-based sorting algorithms in n log n. So, um, because of the constraint, the lower bound has to be n log n, and so you can't theoretically find a comparison-based sorting algorithm that's faster than n log n. And that concludes our discussion for sorting.